my name is Tyler, and this week I'll be showing you uh, how to create a kind of basic fireworks particle system in Unity using their particle system editor. Um, this is the kind of effect that we'll be creating today. Um, it kind of mimics other fireworks by having like a little trail and then an explosion. Um, so you can kind of build all of this to either create your own unique effects that are either more colorful, have more interesting behaviors, like firing off particles constantly, or um, just whatever you can think of, but this is kind of a basic system that you can work off of and kind of shows the basic animation for particles. So let's move that to the side and then make one of our own so we can show you how to do that. Uh, let's reset the position so we don't have to move the camera too much. Um, let's decrease the lifetime because particles are kind of fire off very quickly. And then since they are firing off very quickly, we need to change the starting speed and let's um, for a little bit of variability, we can uh, have the Unity basically choose any speed between these two constant speeds that we give it. So let's give it a relatively fast speed and a pretty dang fast speed. Um, let's change the size just so we can see the particles um, a little bit more. Um, we don't really need a gravity multiplier since we want them to be shooting up and not kind of having this downward force. Um, on them all the time. We are going to want to change the emission instead of a constant rate and want it to be kind of more of a burst so you can kind of see it. And so we can kind of see what's going on a little bit more quickly. Let's change the durations um, instead of five seconds to two seconds so we can kind of see it. Um, it'll burst every two seconds instead of five seconds now. Um, the shape is perfectly fine. A cone works for what we're doing. Um, so we can give our particles a little bit more interesting kind of variation by applying a force um, over time for those, so let's do that a little bit. Um, it's just a simple kind of uh, force that's um, added to the particle at the very beginning of its lifetime and it kind of dissipates um, as it goes on just so that they kind of start off more variable and then they kind of uh, slowly decrease their variability as the time goes on. Um, so let's change, um, since you can't really see it right now, let's change the maximum and minimum limits of that particle and then paste those graphs over to that. Um, the next thing we want to do is color over lifetime. Let's give our particle kind of a yellowish yellowish color, kind of, sort of a little bright. Um, and then instead of having it kind of just pop into existence, we want it to kind of fade in a little bit. So we can do that. Uh, we do want it to not fade out because the explosion effect that we're going to do later is going to kind of hide that a little bit. Um, so with that said, let's move on adding a sub-emitter. I'm going to explain how to use these in a later tutorial video, um, but we're going to be using them for this particle system. So if you know how to use them, cool. If not, no worries. You'll kind of get a sense of how they work um, here. So let's go ahead and add a birth, um, a particle system, or a sub-emitter um, added on the birth of each particle. And now we actually have a hierarchy now because the sub-emitter was automatically added as a child to our um, parent emitter. So let's change the names of these that we, so we don't forget that this is our main and that this is the trail emitter that we have. So back to the trail emitter, we want to have the duration match that of the parent. Uh, lifetime's fine, speed is fine, size, we probably want it to be a little bit smaller than the main, just uh, probably not that small, just so we can kind of tell the difference between the two. Um, and give it a little bit of gravity, so kind of a little bit more realistic. Um, change the emission because right now it's spawning 10 particles at a rate of 10 particles per second for each particle in our main system, so we don't need that many particles, so let's just kind of reduce that. Um, a lot of these numbers you can kind of just play with to see what fits you best, but I'm just doing this um, kind of quickly in order to save time. Uh, the shape is perfectly fine. Uh, we could add a little bit of variability to kind of match the particles um, that we have earlier, um, but instead of doing a force over lifetime, let's do a velocity over lifetime for a bit more immediate results, and kind of just do this random um, kind of in and out of positive velocity, so they kind of just go back and forth a little bit following the particle. Um, so let's change the, the maximum and minimum so it's a little bit more noticeable, but not too noticeable that it's distracting. And then let's go over to the color over lifetime and then give it a kind of interesting fade out and then have a yellow color that kind of matches what we had before in our other system. Uh, 
and then let's do a size over lifetime to make them kind of shrink out of existence to add to our little fade effect. Uh, that's easy enough, so that's good enough for our trail for now. Uh, let's move on to back to our main, and then add the little explosion effect by adding a death sub-emitter. So let's change this one's name to explosion. Match the duration to our other particle, have the lifetime be way shorter because explosions don't last that long, and change the speed because explosions kind of had a very dramatic speed. The size could have it a little bit smaller just so we can see everything that's going on. Um, give it a bit of gravity just so it's a bit more realistic. Actually, let's make that uh, a lot of gravity. And then moving on, uh, we want to change, we don't need 30 particles per particle of our main system because that's a little way too many. Even 20 is a bit much, but I'm um, just doing this so you can kind of see the particles in the video a little bit more. The shape is perfectly fine, it's matching kind of what our initial particle looks like, so that's kind of what we want it to have. We want it to, so that it kind of matches that ball so it explodes out from the ball, or at least looks like it's exploding out from the ball. Um, Moving on, we can do uh, make it kind of smaller over time, like our other trail particles, and that'll give the explosion a little bit more interesting kind of variability. Um, and then let's change the color. Actually, let's have two different colors to make it a little bit more visually interesting. Uh, let's have the first one just be a bluish color, and then we can have that one fade out over time, but we don't want it to fade out too quickly, so let's change the alpha kind of a third, or um, three-fourths of the way into its lifetime so we can kind of see it a bit better. Then copy that over, and then change the color. Uh, let's see, let's have a yellowish uh, particle to match kind of our trail emitters. And well, there you have it, a simple kind of particle system that shows the basic animation for fireworks and can work for, I don't know, a game or a video or something. Um, it should be enough of a base for you to work off of. Um, that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next week.